What's going on everyone? Welcome to another key shot quick tip. In this video, I'll be walking you through some quick and easy ways to level up your key shot renderings by using ground planes. One of the quickest and easiest ways to make your product or vehicle renderings feel more realistic is to give them presence in your scenes by setting them down on a surface and giving them a nice shadow or ground reflection. Often in the past, I've used key shots geometry shapes, models of tables or podiums, and even duplicated parts of the model itself to showcase my product renderings placed on what feels like a real world surface. But hands down, the easiest way to achieve that effect is to work with Keyshot's ground plane geometry. To add ground plane geometry to your scene, simply click on the edit menu at the top of the program window, select add geometry, and choose add ground plane from the flyout menu, or use the shortcut control G. Once selected, your ground plane will appear in your scene, but it will most likely not be immediately noticeable until you select its geometry. With the scene tab open, you can see that when I select the ground plane, the orange outline of it appears in the real time view and the part becomes highlighted in the scene tree. You'll also notice that at this point, your shadow and ground reflections appear no different than before adding the geometry. However, there are a couple ways you can go about changing this. A common method is to apply a material that has the qualities you'd like for a ground surface. For instance, I've applied a rough black metal material, which gives me a nice diffused reflection on a neutral colored surface. From this point, you can go ahead and adjust your ground material the same way you would any other material in Keyshot. Note that using this method does create a horizon line in your scene that can either be useful or problematic depending on the type of scene you're trying to create. On the other hand, I prefer my ground planes to seamlessly mesh with the background color of choice or HDRI that I'm using. Instead of applying a new material to my ground plane, I like to adjust the default ground material settings that come applied. When using this method, you'll want to start by opening the ground planes material properties in the project panel. You'll then locate the specular color, open the color picker, and change the color from black to white. At this point, you should notice that a reflection of your model starts to take shape on the ground plane surface. I then typically adjust the reflection contrast slider next in order to control the contrast of my ground reflection. A value of 0 produces a very faint reflection, while a value of 1 creates a very defined reflection. Once I've found my desired level of contrast, I'll adjust the roughness slider to diffuse my model's reflection. Generally, even highly reflective surfaces have a little texture, so unless you're trying to make your object look like it's sitting on top of a mirrored surface, it's a good idea to give the ground surface a small amount of roughness. On the other hand, if your goal is to create a more emphasized shadow, you can crank up the roughness to diffuse the reflection to a point where it is unrecognizable and appears more shadow-like. You can also adjust the refractive index to increase or decrease the amount of highlights that are picked up in the ground's reflection, but I personally tend to leave the refractive index at the default value of 1.5. It's also good practice to select the ground illumination checkbox so light is reflected off the ground back onto your model in a more natural way. And to select the clip geometry below ground checkbox so that any geometry below the ground plane is cleanly cut off. The clip geometry checkbox is generally not needed for most product renders. However, when rendering automotive images, Tires usually intersect the ground plane to mimic a more realistic appearance of tire compression. Without this checkbox marked, you'll likely see a portion of your tires floating below the ground. At this point, you should have a fairly realistic looking scene with a ground shadow or reflection that makes your model pop. But there are a couple more tips and tricks I'd like to quickly share with you. As I mentioned earlier in this video, one of the main reasons I prefer this method to applying preset materials is because of its overall ability to seamlessly integrate with backgrounds. Whether you're using an HDRI, a solid background color, or a backplate image, this method allows you to quickly and easily make your models fit naturally into any environment of your choosing. And lastly, if you are a Keyshot Pro user, you have the ability to jump into the material graph and add textures to your ground plane the same way you would any other material. So if you do have access to it, I highly recommend exploring some of the different texture options within the graph in order to add a bit more realism to your scenes. 
And if you've never worked in the material graph or just want to learn more about textures in Keyshot, I highly recommend checking out some of our other quick tips and tutorials, which I'll link in the description below. Thanks for watching this Keyshot quick tip. If you're interested in more useful Keyshot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit the channel. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share with your friends.